With Apple's new 15 inch MacBook Air, you can get a big display and save $800 compared to the 16 inch MacBook Pro. But if you make that choice, what exactly are you giving up? Well, we are gonna find out in this video by comparing everything between them, including the designs, portability, ports, displays, speakers, webcam, performance, and more. Right off the bat, you can see that the 16 inch is just a little bit bigger in terms of the display. I've gotta say this 15 inch is really impressive. It's like the perfect size, but before I dig deeper into the displays, I wanna close them down and compare the portability. As you can see, there is a massive difference in thickness. The new 15 inch Air is just so incredibly thin, it feels almost impossible in your hands. And in terms of the actual footprint, you can see the 16 inch is a bit bigger all around, so it's not that big of a difference, but if we put it up kind of to the edges, you can see right there that yes, it is quite a bit bigger. On the side, you can see that the ports are very similar, at least on the left, we have MagSafe 3, two Thunderbolts, and the 16 inch actually has the headphone jack, whereas the MacBook Air has it on the other side, but it is bare, no other ports. The 16 inch gives you an extra Thunderbolt, an SD card slot, and HDMI 2.1. So if you really care about the ports for productivity work or anything else, the 16 inch is the way to go. Now, even though this is a 15 inch class laptop, it only supports one external display, which is very sad, whereas the 16 inch supports three external displays. And now that they're opened up, you can see that they're extremely similar. We have the same general layout. However, the MacBook Pro has black all around the keyboard, which looks really cool and unique. The trackpads look almost identical, no difference is really there. But one thing you will notice is that the 16 inch has speaker grills on the side with a six speaker system compared to the MacBook Air, which does not, but it also has six speakers. So let's do a speaker comparison. Wow guys, that was a huge difference. Even though the 15 inch sounds so much better than the 13 inch M2, this is just on a whole nother level. The sound is more full, it's louder, deeper bass, everything about it, clarity, everything sounds better than the 15 inch for sure. Now getting into the display differences, we know this is a 15 inch MacBook Air compared to 16 inch, but this actually has a 15.3 inch display compared to 16.2, so less than one inch difference. But the really nice thing about the 16 inch is the 3.5K resolution compared to only 2.8K, so it is gonna be more sharp. But just physically looking at them directly, one thing that instantly stands out to me is the difference in bezel width. Right away, you can see that the 15 inch bezels are a little bit chunky, compared to the 16 inch which looks super, super slim. But one of my favorite features on the 14 and 16 inch MacBook Pros is 120 Hertz ProMotion technology, which you can't get on the 15 inch. That basically means that you get 120 Hertz smooth refresh rate compared to just 60 Hertz on the 15. And another unique feature the 16 inch MacBook Pro gets is the XDR display, which means you can display HDR content. You could do editing with it, you could watch HDR our movies, it basically goes up to 1600 nits of peak brightness for HDR content, which looks a lot better than the MacBook Air, which is limited to 500 nits. On top of that, you also have improved contrast ratio, which makes the content and colors really, really pop. But the downside is that sometimes you do get some halo effect. And now let's compare the webcams because one interesting thing is that we saw the 15 inch MacBook Air had better quality than the 13 inch, and they're supposed to be the same. So you guys let me know how this looks compared to the 16 inch. And here we are on the 16 inch MacBook Pro. To me, it looks pretty similar. You guys will probably be able to tell yourselves as well as the microphone difference. So let me know down in the comment section below. But if you want a really good quality webcam, you're gonna have to go with something like this. The new Insta360 Link from our sponsor, Insta360. It's an AI powered 4K webcam. All you do to set it up is you plug it in, you open up this little clip right here, pop it right on onto the top and check this out. 
This looks absolutely fantastic with 4K quality from its half inch sensor. Take a look at that side by side compared to the MacBook, it completely destroys them. But what makes this webcam really special is that it's actually running on a gimbal, so you can move around and it follows you, literally tracks you around the room. That basically works using their AI tracking algorithm, which also supports gestures. So you could turn off auto tracking by showing your palm, and you could also do things like zoom in and put it into whiteboard mode. It also has other cool features like overhead mode, as you can see here, so you can maybe be working on something and showing somebody else. But my favorite thing about this that you can't do on a MacBook ever is all of this customization settings right here, so you can adjust the compensation, make it a little bit brighter, make it less, adjust the white balance to exactly what you want. So go ahead and check out the Insta360 Link 4K webcam using the link in the description below. And now let's finally get into performance, which is the biggest reason why people would buy the 16 inch MacBook Pro in the first place. Starting off, they both have 16 gigs of RAM, the 15 inch is upgraded, and the SSD as well, both with 512 gigabytes. Of course, the 15 inch has the M2 chip with the full eight cores and the 10 core GPU, whereas the 16 inch has the full 12 core M2 Pro chip and 19 GPU cores. And now with that said, let's run the CPU benchmark. And while this is running, keep in mind that 800 difference between the two. However, you could get the 16 inch on sale right now for a couple hundred bucks off, which is really nice using the link in the description. So it really only becomes a five to $600 difference. As you can see in terms of single core performance, they're basically neck and neck the same because they have the same M2 cores, but for the multi-core, the 16 inch is 43% faster, which is a pretty big difference. And now for the metal graphics test, it's an even bigger difference, 78% faster on the M2 Pro 16 inch MacBook Pro. And now let's move on to web design using Figma. Now this is a project sent over from 500 designs a really awesome studio in California. We're gonna start off with a zoom test, basically zooming in and seeing how fast it loads and responds. We have a delay right there. Let's see how long it takes. There you go, it is now sharp. Let's do the same thing on this one. Honestly, it looks like it took around the same time on both of them. But now let's actually export these selected 12 layers and see which one gets done faster. And there you go, it's done. The 16 inch finished in a minute and 35 seconds, whereas the 15 inch took a little bit longer, a minute and 48. But honestly, for web design, that's not that big of a difference. I'd rather just save the cash. Now, as far as SSD speeds, they are basically the same because both of these use the same SSDs, but if you buy the 256 gig base model, that thing is about half the speed and the multitasking is worse as well. So make sure to enable those notifications if you guys wanna see us compare a $1,300 Air compared to this $1,700 one. And now I'm running Cinebench R23 to compare the CPU performance under full load. The thing with the MacBook Air is that it is fanless. We opened it up and showed you guys that compared to having dual fans on the 16 inch. And as you see, even after about 30 seconds, we're already at 107 degrees Celsius on the air where this one, it is much cooler. And we have 8641 for the Air and 14,728 for the 16 inch Pro. That's a difference of 70%. Now I'm running the 10 minute throttling test because for longer tasks, the MacBook will slow down even more. As you guys can see, we're already going from the base 3.2 gigahertz to slowing down. And after about 10 minutes, we will actually uh, get under three gigahertz and our wattage will go down to about 14 compared to this one, which uses a lot more power, 36 watts, it's gonna stay completely flat and consistent. And if you're worried about the fans here being loud, they're not. This is a silent machine and most of the times the fans stay off. The test is almost done and pulling out my thermal cam, you guys can see that the 16 inches hottest spot is on the screen where the exhaust vents bring the exhaust up. And if we look at the keyboard, I saw there for a second, 42 degrees was the hottest part compared to the air where that heat is higher 46 and it spreads out a lot more so on the keyboard 
And what happens over time is the whole bottom gets hot and then the city computer will actually slow down even more uh, to prevent you from burning your lap. And now the scores are 7402 for the Air and 14,670 for the 16 inch. And that's not a big difference compared to before. So with CPU tasks, even though the Air throttles, it doesn't slow down that much. But what about graphics? For this, I'm gonna run 3D Mark's Wildlife Extreme Unlimited mode, so the resolutions don't play into it. And look at that, we have 41.2 FPS compared to 77.8. That is 89% faster as far as gaming graphics performance. Um, that is crazy. And this is the short test. Now let's go ahead and do the 20 minute stress test to see how the air holds up being fanless. And look at that guys, we have a score of 5,505 compared to 12,601. That is close to two and a half times better performance on the 16 inch, because if you look here during the stress test, the performance is basically flat, whereas in the air, it starts dipping down uh, around the five, six minute mark and it gets worse. Um, so basically here, you lose about 20% of the performance once it heats up, and that is a massive difference. Now in terms of Xcode programming performance, we have our benchmark here, and I'm gonna run it in the terminal command to make sure everything is fair. And that took 120 seconds on the Air and just 75 seconds on the 16 inch M2 Pro. That is a massive difference. But what about for music production? I have Logic Pro opened up right here. I already did the test because it takes a long time and the Air in the new Logic benchmark handled 85 tracks, whereas the 16 inch Pro did 180. That's you know, pretty much double or slightly more than double of what it can handle. You can look up the test for yourself, but it's clear to see that the 16 inch Pro is way more powerful if you need that. Now for photo editors, I have Adobe Lightroom Classic opened up right here, and it does a great job using both the CPU and the GPU. Now, a lot of things you're gonna do, you won't notice a difference, but some things, like the new AI noise reduction, the 16 inch Pro is much quicker, taking just 42 seconds compared to a minute and 13 seconds. And now I'm exporting 50 42 megapixel RAW files to JPEG, they all had corrections on there, and the 16 inch is definitely going ahead. Wow guys, that took a minute and two seconds for the Pro compared to two minutes and 40 seconds for the Air. Now, I did this in a previous video with 500 images and the Air really slowed down. It was like a 25 minute render and so the whole thing came to kind of to a crawl. So if you deal with a lot of photos, man, that is a crazy difference. Now for video editing with Final Cut, both these laptops do a killer job, even with 4K ProRes RAW, standard footage. It's only when you get crazy. For example, I have 8K RAW right here and the graphics are being maxed out. But most people will edit regular 4K and here I have film grain applied, I have multiple LUTs, the Air has no issues with this, only with the Pro, you have a little bit more graphics overhead to add more effects. Now exporting this, believe it or not, but the times are exactly the same because these use the same encoders. It's only when you start doing heavier projects like this 4K ProRes RAW, Blackmagic RAW, or special animations where the 16 inch starts moving ahead. You guys could see that it is rolling much faster here. 54 seconds compared to a minute and 40, and this is a five minute project. Now, a minute 40 is still very fast, so I would say that if you do video editing, unlike photo editing, for a lot of people, the air is just fine. And with that said, the 16 inch Pro just got a low battery notification. Let's go ahead and check it out. We are at 10% battery life. And in terms of the air, here we are at 31%. So even though Apple rates the 16 inch better, if you're doing heavy tasks, the air uses a lot less power, so you will get better battery life. Now, if you're doing very simple stuff, then the Pro will be just slightly ahead, but they are fairly close. So to answer the original question, is it worth spending the extra 700 bucks? A lot of people find themselves in this category. Well, if you really push your machines, you saw that in a lot of those tests, the 16 inch Pro demolished the air, especially for longer tasks, where it throttles down and graphics is a big difference, 
but a lot of people that have spent the extra for the ports for the better screen, they've said that they ended up not needing it. So I would keep that in mind. If you, if those things are nice things to have, but you love the thinness and you don't currently do very tough things, I would still say that the Air is a great deal. You'll be happy with it and it holds its value well. So you can sell it and upgrade if you want to in the future, if you really have that need. Let us know your thoughts down below. Click that circle above to subscribe. Check out one of those great videos over there and we'll see you in the next one.